that we were part of a reconciling ministry. So it could be a story, your own story, or it could be something you witnessed. So let me give you a couple of examples. One is, um, for me, there was a moment in my coming out story, the first time that I was out in the midst of a congregation, was when I was moving away from Dallas. You know, I came out in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and Dallas is actually a cool place in the day, you know. But it also felt really dangerous. And I wasn't sure if I had a future in leadership in the church when I came out. And, uh, and so the first time I stood up with my then partner, and the church blessed us because we were moving. I was like, oh my gosh. We are seen. Our faces have been seen, our stories, our lives have been seen, and people reached out their hands and blessed us on our way. That's about how long. All right. Um, so that was like a personal story. It might be something, uh, something that you saw. You saw somebody's face light up when they saw the rainbow colors in front of your church. Or somebody mentioned the phone as a volunteer at church and somebody said, can I really come? For real? It's going to be okay? So whatever your story is, all right? So three or four, and you can pass. It's okay if you don't have one or you don't want to tell one. It's fine. Um, but witnessing is just as important as telling. So that's okay. So get together, threes or fours, no more than that, because then you'll run out of time. All right? And take some time. We'll bring you back to singing when it's time. <laughs> Stories of finding life. Come on over. Just don't kick the camera. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I learned this is harder than this. They told me. Oh. No, I'm just moving it here. Yeah, they're moving it. Here.
distance, the story I told would sound like this. They walked to the center of the sanctuary, these women who loved each other. The congregation stretched out their hands and blessed them for the journey. This coming out was grace and hope and recognition and blessing and life saving. Three sentences. Then you might end up with North Haven United Methodist Church or whatever the church was. If you remember, you know. I think there's North Haven over there. <laughs> so, that's what I invite you to do. Um, you can write it down. You're just going to spend some time in quiet doing that on your own. Um, there's some golf pencils I think you can use. Find something to write it down and just make it your head. You can share this with the group when we're done. I'll give you the cue. But let's just spend some quiet time writing down the three sessions. Or scoring it with a poem. Just take a moment. wrote his own story to share with the world. In the church that raised him, his authentic self was shared and realized. Among his loved ones, he was affirmed and called beloved. Faith United Methodist Church, North Haven, Connecticut. A once racist congregation in Birmingham, Alabama, found their once cold and hard hearts, strangely warm. They discovered that God had, hadn't given up on them, and they didn't give up on each other. They experienced real transformation in 2019, became fully reconciled. I have not in this. Our church invited drag queens and kings into our sacred space to sing and tell stories. And they showed up. And they brought their friends, and the Holy Spirit was there too. Mosaic United Methodist Church, Oklahoma City. A family came to church to 
celebrate love. The church did not care that they didn't fit rigid understandings of gender. The ministry happened when they were accepted for who they were, who they loved, and how God had made them a blessing. University United Methodist Church, East Lansing, Michigan. A quiet welcome of a teenage stranger far from home led to an amazing discovery. God welcomed and loved all of me unconditionally and saved my life. Capitol Hill United Methodist Church. In February of 2019, a horrified group of United Methodists felt shock and then determination. A rainbow flag was lovingly produced out of anguish and then blessed. The congregation determined no rule will stop us from doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with God and neighbor. First United Methodist Church Council. Weddings were held in San Francisco all through the long February weekend. Several lesbian and gay couples from church were married. The next Sunday, we were greeted during coffee hour with a wedding reception of no fewer than 20 cakes baked by the straight folk in our congregation. <laughs> Let us eat cake. That's <laughs> <laughs> I have this work. <laughs> Six months ago, I moved from Missouri to Minnesota to attend college and found a new home. Having been empowered by the people I encountered and worked with, I began to do work I felt I was called to do. Because of this work and the support and love of my community, on Sunday the Board of Trustees at our university will vote to make our university reconciling, Hamlin University. Me, a queer pastor preaching to a reconciling congregation for the first time, queer congregants thanking me for using my queer voice to share the gospel. It was the first time they had a queer pastor share the message and they could see themselves reflected in the gospel. I lived in our English church. A young black gay child was frightened by the fears of others and the song was only in his heart. One day someone saw him, all of him, and told him to sing. As he sang out, Everyone began to see God in him, and they too began to sing with him. Taylor Memorial UMC, Oakland, California. My kid came out, and I fell to my knees praising Jesus for who she is, and for taking me and her on a journey through embracing church families. Before I ever knew she was queer, I was pulled to worship with folks who helped raise her, teach her, celebrate her, sing with her. She knows nothing at the age of 19 but love and church. Praise for this journey through Wilson Memorial United Methodist Church in Baltimore, Grace United Methodist Church in Baltimore, Towson United Methodist Church in Towson, Maryland, First United Methodist Church in Pittsburgh. We've moved a lot. University Circle United Methodist Church in Cleveland, and now here my home church, Belmont United Methodist. And by the way, I'm so glad y'all are here. A justice for you.
blessing. After so much that God has done, and that we are witnesses to, think about it. Do you really believe 40 years ago those of you who have been alive <laughs> <laughs> that we would have a clear vision in the United States Church? Well, something is happening, something has happened. You've heard the stories. Have you heard the stories? Say yes. Yes. <laughs> and this is what I tell my soul. So why is it, oh my soul, that all it takes is a single email, a single conversation, a meeting of the delegation, a vote at general conference, yeah, the declaration by the annual conference from somewhere. All it takes is that much to erase all of this love and all the records of what is done. Oh my soul, what is wrong here? What is wrong? So my soul prays to God and says, God, open the eyes of my heart. So I can see what's really happening and not get distracted and confused by those things. But wait, they are also happening. But they're not the big thing. They're not the big part. You know they're not the big part of justice. You know where this is heading. And yet this punishment comes with just like a single conversation. After the whole God has done. So I invite you to pray with my heart and my soul that our eyes be open and we see what we must be. Open the eyes of our hearts now. Open the eyes of our hearts. We 
we are born alive, we are blood running through our veins passionately alive. Now let's live like it. <laughs> From confession to convicted. It is a short journey actually. Just look up and around and see one another's face. Christ is alive and goes before us to show and share what love can do. This is a day of new beginnings. Our God is making all things new. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Hallelujah.
blessed is your son who came to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Listen, people. The teacher, healer, lover is with you. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. He sat down at the table with us. All of the unlikely ones. <laughs> Let us remind ourselves by saying, our God is present with all, and all beings all. Can you say that with me? Our God is present with all. thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so friends, let's be a community, community task. And let's get the story. We have the story of the world that I can share. So Christ has done the world. So Christ has done the world.
Amen? Amen. So here's how we're going to do it. <laughs> I call it holy chaos, but then that's the church, right? <laughs> so servers, come on up. Servers are going to get, we've got six pairs of servers. They're going to come to you. So just stay where you are. They're going to mingle about you, right? We're going to just kind of have a party here, and when you get served, after you get served, you can go back to your seat so it'll start thinning out, right? So they can see who's left and make sure everybody's fit. All right? So we're just going to, I mean, and you can, you can talk to each other.
Yeah. Hey. 